Mush. There it is. Busted U joint. I just changed a month or two ago. And the uh, axle stub bent. Did a number on this baby. Time for a one ton front end, I think. Who has time? Oh, I got a frost plug block heater leaking somewhere up there. I got a crawl underneath and I got a couple of headlights. I just changed and I've been working late at night and I couldn't show you the video. Change the radiator. I'm going to show you the old one. It's getting mild here. Maple syrup's running. Soon we'll be having uh, some poutine <laughs> with maple syrup. Somebody will figure that out. Poutine! P-O-U-T-I-N-E. All right, lights on, and we got mud blocking the radiator. Road debris. This is why it was overheating. Whoop, James is bright in the city. So the radiator's pretty blocked. Not that clogged internally, mind you. And where's that leak? Oh yeah, leaking from that corner. There's the top driver's side corner leaking from the top. Actually, it's not that bad for 25 years old. It's still solid. Not rotten. A little green in the corner from the water I was putting in instead of antifreeze leaking. What was this piece of steel for? I was going to make something out of this. I have it penciled off. I was going to make something out of that piece of steel and I forget what it was. Too many projects. I've got a sandblasted battery tray. My buddy's got a sandblaster, but it uses an oilless little air compressor, and it's too friggin' noisy, and I'm gonna blow up his compressor. What else are we working on here? Ball joints. I gotta change the ball joints. How am I gonna show you this? Try this. Can't see it, huh? Sun shining? I get something on the lens? Maybe some welding splatter. What's going on here? There we go. Sun's too bright. Anyways, that lower ball joint. Oh, I know what I'll do. Get the pry bar here. There we go. I got a pry bar. Pretty short for what I have to show you, but I think it'll work. Nope. That'll just show the upper ball joint. And I'll wiggle it. Anyway, suffice to say the ball joints are toast. Change them when I get that axle taken apart from my parts truck, which I've already conveniently jacked up over here. Uh-oh, brake seized. Scrape. Rusted out of junk. Luckily I kept this parts truck here. I've been taking some goodies off of it. Put another axle over here I was going to show you. I've got a three-quarter ton axle that I removed from a 77 Suburban a few years ago, way back in the back of the barn. And I took these off of a blazer that I sold before YouTube. I had a blazer, an 87 blazer half and the guy had put one ton axles on and I removed the hubs. And in place of these giant hubs, I put on the locking hubs that were on here. This is a full-time four-wheel drive blazer, 203 transfer case with a center differential that allows you to run it in four-wheel drive all the time. And I took them and I had a friend of mine did it actually, and he put them on the so-called three-quarter ton, one-ton blazer. So here's a GM axle. It's actually upside down from that 77 Suburban. And I think it's a half-ton style, the Dana, Dana 44, I think. Just a little bit older, but yet these hubs and the blazer's long gone a couple of years ago. Oops. These hubs seem to fit. See? Looks like it lines up just right. So, I don't know. I measured the spacing on the knuckle between there and there. It's nine and a half inches. So it seems to me like the Dana 44 half ton, three quarter ton axle. So called uh, light duty. <laughs> I know about that. But yet this hub, monster hub, that's twice the size, twice the size of the one on my newer style Dana 44. I'll show you the difference. Look at that. Monster size. So I don't know what I have here. 
Maybe the Dana 44 used to use a larger hub that was similar to the one-ton hub. Don't know. Somebody will answer the question for me. And I'll get back to work. Nine o'clock in the trash. Dumpster diving. Getting warmer. What's the temperature out here? Uh-oh. In the sun? 60. Probably more like 50. All right. Thanks for looking. T-Rock. <laughs> Another truck. Two-wheel drive. Come on.